welcome dear participants to the second module of the first week in this discussion we would look at proxemics try to define it and understand the four basic zones of proxemics as an aspect of non verbal communication proximity looks at how we treat the space and distance between us and other people in any dyadic or small group situation proxemics has its origin in the word proximity which implies nearness in space time or relationship in everyday life we maintain certain distance with other people and therefore we maintain a particular type of space and distance with others we also communicate our attitudes and feelings towards them any change in our special relationship with other people also communicates the type of attitude we have towards them whether we want to maintain certain distance from them are we at ease with them in a group situation our orientation towards other people also displays with which group member we are more comfortable in the same way we would find that in dyadic situations also if we like a person or if we are close to a person we tend to move closer to them this is a very superficial way of understanding proxemics but this is also the quintessential interpretation of the term in these sketches and in this visual we find that different aspects of proxemics have been communicated if we look at the photograph in which two people are sitting on the same bench but the distance which exists between them and the distance which has been studiously maintained by them also suggest that there is no actual closeness between these two the difference is in their attitudes as independent human beings can also be seen on the basis of the other aspects of body language in these photographs also we find that the proximity and the space which we are maintaining vis-a-vis -vis others also conveys our attitude and ideas towards other people we can make out in the left hand side photographs whether the space has been used to intimidate another person in the dialogue of the two people which of the two is being defensive and which one is being aggressive similarly on the right hand side corner photograph we can look at the ease and the distance which has been maintained by these two people we can contrast these pictures with the bottom corner photograph in which a group of 3 people has been displayed but in this group we look at the two people are standing with certain closeness in comparison to the third person and the third person who is slightly isolated in comparison to others is also showing his isolation with the help of other body linguistic signs the term proxemics has been coined by the cultural anthropologist edward t hall he had used this word in 1963 publication of his book with the title the hidden dimension the hidden dimension is in fact the dimension which is never talked about specifically by anybody he has put across in this book his seminal theory about our perception of space and use of interpersonal distances to mediate their interactions with other people he had also indicated a pragmatic relationship of his research to the principles of linguistic structuralism and he has also identified the culturally dependent ways in which people use interpersonal distances to comprehend and mediate their ideas and associations with other people to edward hall proxemics was something which helps us to structure the space as well as the micro space the distance which we have with each other in our daily transactions and also the organization of space in our houses in buildings and ultimately in the layout of the town so we find that proxemics is not only a study of the distance which people maintain with each other in different ways but it is also a study of space as it is being created 
and organized in other aspects of our experiences. The construction of houses as well as the arrangement within a house and this and similarly how do we construct the office space with the help of the buildings and with the help of the interior decoration. So, organization of spaces and houses, offices, buildings, city planning as well as urban renewal is an unconscious structuring of micro space and space has been treated by Edward T. Hall as a specialized elaboration of culture. The idea of proxemics can be understood by suggesting that we walk within an invisible bubble. When we walk or we stand, we do not only occupy the space which is exactly required by our body. But let us say that an invisible bubble is surrounding us from every side and we also treat this space of invisible bubble as a part of our own body space. We can look at this aspect of our behavior in crowded places, elevators, trains, seating arrangement in restaurant offices as well as in individual preferences regarding the seat we occupy in any crowded place. Now, the idea behind this invisible bubble is that when we walk, we are surrounded by this invisible bubble and we normally do not allow people to encroach upon this invisible bubble. We feel threatened when somebody intentionally or accidentally encroaches upon this bubble. We allow only those people who are very close to us to enter this bubble and irrespective of gender and culture, if we are facing a situation in which people are intruding within our bubble and we cannot do anything about it, we develop a defense mechanism. You might notice that when we are in a crowded space, when there is nobody around us who is friendly with us or who is our acquaintance, we try to develop a mechanism to create a make-believe sense that this invisible bubble is still protected. For example, in lifts, we would look at inanimate objects. We will not maintain an eye contact with others. We would look at the lift buttons. We would look at the number of floor which is being displayed. We would look at certain object and now of course, we prefer to look at the smartphone in our hand. But we try to avoid any eye to eye contact with other people and this avoidance of direct eye contact helps us to understand that we are still keeping our invisible bubble intact. The same happens when we are traveling in a train for example or in a bus or in any other automobile where other people who are not known to us have to share the same space with us. We develop a body language which suggests that we do not want to be close to them. So, proxemics occurs by virtue of people's relative position to each other whereas, we also try to keep this invisible bubble intact. Proxemics also describe characteristic special relationships including territorial phenomena among persons in various cultures or within a given culture for different kinds of social occasions. The study of proxemics helps us to understand the level of comfort and discomfort which we have towards other people. For example, as I have already commented, if we move closer to another person, it may signal a better comfort, some level of intimacy. On the other hand, if we move farther down, then it also offers a signal of discomfort or fear etc. At the same time, it can be an assertion of power. In order to emphasize one's status of power, one may try to move into other people's personal space as it is often done by the police people, by people who are interrogating others. And at the same time, we find that in order to assert power, a person can also be very physically distant. So, we find that these extremities suggest the relationship between the power and the absence of power in different ways. Proxemics is divided into four different zones of intimacy level. 
these four zones are a classificatory system for instinctive spacing distances and they are intimate, personal, social and public zones. Each zone has its own close and far faces which we shall discuss and at the same time there are cultural and locational aspects related with them which will also be discussed. The four zones and their distances are mentioned over here. The intimate zone which is 15 to 45 centimeter from the closest possible contact to about 45 centimeter. Here as you can understand the other person is allowed to intrude into our personal bubble. The social zone is somewhere from 46 centimeter to 1.2 meter. The personal zone is 1.2 to 3.6 meters. The public zone is anywhere over this limit. The intimate zone is from the closest possible body contact to 18 inches which is a distance for comforting for whispering. This is also a zone in which we allow only very close people and family members. The personal zone is somewhere from 18 inches to 4 feet, a distance which enables us to have casual conversations amongst friends and family. This is also the space which we maintain for our day-to-day -day work, for example in offices etc. Social zone is from 4 to 12 feet, which is a distance which is reserved for formal social and business transactions. Public zone is anywhere which is beyond this, which is a suitable distance for public lectures, performances, etc. These zones are not compartmentalized very strictly. There may be minor variations, but the idea behind them is communicated by roughly keeping the same space. The intimate space or zone suggests that we share the psychological bonding with other people. We are mixing the bubbles of two people. We feel threatened if this space is violated and irrespective of the situation or gender or race, if suddenly comes very close to us, it results into a certain anxiety or a lack of comfort and our immediate reaction is to step back so as to enhance the space between the two of us. Sports etc. are an exception because close physical contact for example in boxing or in wrestling etc. is a compulsion. It is significant for us to keep the sanctity of the intimate space because the presence of other people within this space may be overwhelming. The significance of voice and touch is also underscored in any discussion on intimate space. At the same time, our understanding of intimate space and to what extent we can willingly share it with others and with whom is also decided by our cultural understanding. In this particular video, we can look at the cultural aspects which govern our personal space. Everyone needs their own personal space. Personal space varies depending on the surroundings and the situation. But if it's not done willingly, it can create a lot of tension. So how do people kind of maintain this balance between crowding stress on the one hand and feeling isolated on the other. So there are behavioral mechanisms according to Robert Summer that people use to optimize their contact with other people. So what do we mean by personal space? Well, we said that it's an area around somebody's body, it's an invisible kind of zone and if people go into it too closely you start to feel uncomfortable, you start to feel that stress of too much proximity.
According to Edward Hall, who's an anthropologist, he found some very uh, consistent zones of personal space in his research across many different cultures. One zone is the intimate zone, zero to 18 inches of contact with somebody else. The personal distance zone, of a foot and a half to four feet out. Social distance, four to 12 feet out. Or public distance, where you go into uh, a lecture and uh, you're interacting with the speaker who's up on a podium and you're separated from that person. So these are different sort of zones of personal space that people use. Let's say you are giving a speech. Then I would be sitting here in a distance as an audience. I am in your public space. Now let's say I am very impressed by your speech and I want to comment on it. I would come up to you closer for a conversation. I am in your social space. But if I come this close, that's a little weird because I'm a mere acquaintance and you only let your family and close friends to enter your personal space. And now, Whoa, whoa, this just creeps you out because I am now in a hugging distance. I am in your intimate space while I barely know you. Now you are alarmed and maybe even offended. Personal space interactions are actually eight dimensional. There's voice volume. What's up? Body heat. <sighs> eye contact. Smell, oh. touching, ah. gender position, body position, and whether the space encourages positive interaction. You know, I, I have a friend who works at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. How'd you like a behind the scenes tour? Really? You could do that? Easily. It wouldn't be any trouble? Of course not. When did you go? How about right now? I'm ready. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, let me get my coat. Elaine, what do you say? Well, I don't think so, Aaron. Uh, uh, I have plans. Oh. How about you, Jerry? <laughs> I'm sorry. You sure? You can examine the artwork up close. Maybe I'll try and catch up with you. Firstly, according to a 2009 study in Nature, these invisible bubbles are based on the amygdala, which is deep within the brain. It controls aggression, fear, and unsurprisingly, social interaction. If the amygdala is damaged, people may lose their understanding of personal space, and in our teenage years, the size of the invisible bubbles that surround us are solidified. They're highly dependent on culture. So personal space in a public transportation-based urban area here in the United States would be vastly different than those in a car-only rural area in Russia, not to mention the difference between other countries. Next zone is of our personal space, which is somewhere from 18 to 48 inches. This is the distance which we normally maintain at workplace during our office parties, friendly social gatherings, etc. This is the buffer which allows us to continue our day-to-day -day functioning along with others without intruding into each other's bubble. During our interactions with acquaintances, we send the signals of intimacy by enhancing this space or by shrinking it. This space can inflate or shrink and the range also decides the type of attitude which we want to show towards other people. If we look at this photograph again, we find that two individuals in this group photo are at a closer distance to each other. On the other hand, the third person is maintaining slightly more distance. We can also make out that whereas the two people are at complete ease with each other, the third person does not have that easy relationship or association with them right now. We definitely have to look at the context in order to ascertain the complete meaning, but this meaning becomes clear on the basis of the proxemics and related signals which are being sent. In the close phase of the personal space, we find that the distance is so that a person can hold another person or can extend the arm to touch a person. The far phase is slightly longer where if people extend their arms, they may perhaps can touch each other and it is this aspect which is used in haptics which we will discuss later on. 
This is also the distance which allows us to discuss topics of mutual interest. In this video, our idea of the personal zone or personal space also becomes clear. What are the rules of personal space in public places? Etiquette experts suggest that human beings should keep two feet of space or 24 inches between them. Does this feel comfortable to you? Yeah, it's good. This is what it's, you're used to? Yeah, I don't like it when people are too close to me. Too close is when they're like just a couple inches. This is too close. <laughs> too close. Is this too close? No. Is this too close? That's close enough. Now most of us know the unwritten rules of elevator etiquette. Find the least crowded spot, keep your eyes forward, and your mouth shut. But what happens when you break those rules? We took over this elevator security camera to find out. Despite plenty of room, I moved uncomfortably close to other riders. Most simply stepped away. This guy even jumped, but several decided to hold their ground. I went toe-to-toe -to -toe with this woman and she wouldn't budge. And this woman, who stayed pressed against the back of the elevator, may have remained calm, but she felt something very different. I had a moment where I was kind of wanting to push you or shove you or punch you or <laughs> yell glad, at you. I'm glad you didn't. Thank but you. No, okay. Lucky for me, the average elevator ride lasts just 30 seconds. Next stop, the bus, where you're expected to choose an open seat away from other riders. We boarded this one with a hidden camera on a quiet day. There were plenty of empty seats, but I preferred to try people's patience instead. This woman was kind enough to point out the very obvious available seat right in front of her. While this guy made no objection to my sitting next to him, though he did get off at the very next stop. So what's your general recommendation when it comes to personal space? Excuse me, miss? Nearly everyone we met seemed to agree on how to cope with someone so who gets a like little this, too close. Do? Don't get too close to people you don't know. Probably step back. Keep your distance. But our unscientific social experiment revealed something more. When confined to small spaces, like in the elevator, people were more prone to protect their territory. While those we approached in wide open spaces, like at this park, rarely moved at all. And this woman even struck up a conversation. How you doing? Hi. Because sometimes it's worth giving up a little personal space for pleasant company. The third is the social space or the social zone, which is somewhere from 4 to 12 feet. We maintain this distance from strangers and those people with whom we are not very well familiar or even people we want to avoid. It is at this distance that we have to be aware that the physical movements, the kinesic aspects of our body become more important as the exact details of facial expressions cannot perhaps be perceived. At this distance, touch is also not possible. And therefore, we find that in certain office spaces, this is the designated space for certain tasks. For example, at the billing desks, at the receptionist counter, it is the social space which is maintained. Where is the kinesic features become important? The voice level also has to be louder in this zone. It enables us to continue to work silently also in the presence of another person without appearing to be rude. The fourth zone is the public zone or the public space which is anything over 12 feet. While talking to a large group or while making a very formal presentation, this is the space. Whereas in the previous three zones, the individual identity becomes important. In the public space, the identity of the audience does not remain important for us. In these situations, the identity of the speaker is definitely important for the audience, but the audience are not responded to as individuals by the speaker in this situation. We automatically tend to adopt a formal style where the selection of words is careful, the phrasing of the sentences is also meticulous and a certain level of formal distance automatically creeps in in our language as well as in our body language. And therefore, our voice, our gestures and our body tenses become exaggeratedly communicative and they are different from what they are in our intimate zone. 
The far face is also the distance that is automatically set around important public figures for safety reasons too. So, what exactly are the connotations of proxemix in our day to day life as well as in our day to day professional performance? Personal space is precious and unconscious changes in body behavior in crowded places take place as we have already discussed. We may avert eyes for example, we may try to keep our face absolutely impassive, we may try to maintain a posture which is relatively rigid when we are forced into these situations. At the same time, if we encroach upon the personal space of another person, we would obviously be termed as obnoxious and rude people and therefore, these type of encroachments should be avoided. The connotations of proxemix are also important in space settings. As we will look at in further detail in our next discussions, the symbolic space divisions are artistically created in restaurants and in office desks also. Even when the space is shared, we find that artificial boundaries are created to give an impression to the people who are working in the shared space to understand a particular space as belonging to them so that they can understand that their personal space, that their intimate bubble is not being disturbed by others. And therefore, we find that the visual boundaries are created either by transparent barriers which may be very small and tiny or even by putting objects close to us on a table on which we are sitting to define the space which belongs to us. This is done sometimes subconsciously, sometimes it is also done in a conscious manner to send a particular message that this space belongs to us and that we do not want it to be disturbed. So, boundaries are also marked by space artifacts on desks and on walls etc. For example, you would come across some people who put lot of decoration on their walls so that the space can be designated as their own. These connotations we would discuss in further detail when we will look at space settings in detail in our next modules discussions. If we look at this video, the connotations of space become clear to us. It's considered acceptable for a commuter to fall asleep on the shoulder of a stranger. quite a different story. Of course, they could always adapt. France is a relatively crowded society and the people experience greater physical contact. The Germans tend to be more strict about the range of distance that indicates intrusion. In the US, sticking one's head or body part into another's house is usually not considered as territory invasion as long as one's feet are outside the house. Yet Germans find such behaviors alarming. Germans generally feel that having an open door can lead to intrusion while Americans generally feel that keeping a door closed leads to ostracism. Now that we know that there can be differences even within the Western world, it is not surprising that Middle Eastern nations differ greatly from the US. Public spaces in Middle Eastern countries tend to be more crowded. Physical contact in public spaces is more common in Middle Eastern countries. Even when in public areas, Americans keep a distance from other people to protect privacy. Yet in Middle Eastern nations, Public areas are purely public, and the person cannot claim private space.
as it is controlled in other aspects of body language, our understanding of space is also subconsciously controlled in most of our interactions in our professional life. We can say that shy people have bigger distances and people who are extroverts are keen to create a smaller distance between themselves and the other interactant. However, this desire to create a bigger distance should not be interpreted as necessarily a negative desire. Spacing and distances are also used consciously to establish certain messages regarding authority as well as relationships which we want to have with others. Our personal space is sacred to us and irrespective of the culture we find that this aspect is sometimes abused by people who want to impose their authority on us. Whenever bullies try to intimidate others, we find that the encroachment of personal space takes place. Whenever any law enforcement agency also wants to intimidate people, then we find that the encroachment of personal space takes place. In the same way, it is true that salespeople maintain their distances. They never encroach upon your personal space, but at the same time, they act in such a way that you have to keep your fingers busy. This aspect of the salespeople's behavior we would take up when we will take up kinesics in detail. So, today we have discussed the basic four zones of proxemics as well as what exactly do they mean and how precious they are to us. In our next discussion, we would take up the different types of cultures, for example, high contact and low contact cultures as well as the cultural aspects related with our understanding of proxemics. Thank you.